Hi guys, this is jsnon.com and I'm here with a review of the Huawei Y7 Prime 2018. It's one of the few budget phones that we tested recently from Huawei. We're dealing here with a handset that priced quite low. So uh, this phone is priced at around uh, 170 or 180 dollars quite affordable sub 200 dollars phone are clearly a budget offering now in spite of the budget offering this is a dual camera machine clad in a beautiful blue with a fingerprint scanner and face unlock with a full view display and quite quite a few interesting aspects even though it does make some compromises so huawei y7 prime 2018 it was launched this spring and it's priced at 180 bucks now design wise it's a familiar story. It looks like glass, but it's actually a plastic. It's a quite well-made plastic, shiny and glossy. It reminds me of a Huawei Honor more than another series. The phone measures 7.8 millimeters in thickness and weighs 155 grams. Basically, it's about 25 grams lighter than the Huawei P20 Pro, in spite of having a big diagonal. The back looks like a candy, like a jawbreaker. That's the vibe. It looks premium. Uh, for the price tag it's got a 5.99 inch screen up front they call it full view it's basically supposed to have the newfangled 80 to 9 aspect and other things here well the phone sits okay in the hand not very slippery also not exactly easy one hand usage because it's quite a wide phone and also a long phone and the back side tends to get smudged easily as well as the facade it's got big bezels but it's comfy and it looks quite okay for the price tag now as far as the screen is concerned, we're dealing here with a 5.99 inch full view IPS LCD screen with a 1440 over 720 pixel resolution. Now uh, we put the screen to the test and let's see what came out. So we got this typical sample here, which we always use for testing. And one thing I noticed is that the playback app has a pop-up play mode, which lets you play the video in another window while doing something else. Now we feed the whole video on the screen and we noticed that the contrast is rather weak in the sunlight. The colors are pretty vivid. The wide angles seem okay at first sight, but vertically when you're looking at the phone, not that good. And brightness is okay just indoors. If you go outdoors, you will see nothing. I mentioned before the vertical view angles. When you tilt the phone a bit, you lose a lot of visibility. So you look at it from the front, it's okay. From the sides, not that okay. We also did a bunch of other tests concerning the screen, like putting its display under the microscope. And let's see what that brought us. This is the pixel arrangement. It's RGB straps pixels. And we also te tested the brightness, achieving a top level of 246 lux units, which is not very impressive. It beats the HTC Desire 10 lifestyle, the Sony Xperia E4, and it's the equal of the LG G Flex, but it's below 234 other phones that we've tested. So in the end doesn't sound very impressive now when it comes to other aspects we got uh, screen settings we got brightness we got a color mode with tweaks for default warm cold or you can pick your favorite color we got sleep mode we got eye comfort which gets rid of the naughty blue hue for your eyes we got full screen display so the apps are fit perfectly within the new format text size smart resolution which automatically lowers the resolution to help save power and that's about it. The screen feels like a first compromise on the specs list. Now, as far as the CPU is concerned, we're dealing here with an exception. Usually Huawei proposes Kirin processor that they make themselves. This one adopts a Qualcomm Snapdragon 430, which the Nokia 6 and the Moto G6 Play also have, plus 3 GB of RAM, 32 GB of storage, and a micro SD card slot. Luckily, there was no noticeable lag in day-to-day -day functioning, but in games, we did come into it. In Mayhem Combat and Riptide, we did run across a bit of lag at some point. So let's check out the experience, the gaming experience. Okay, Riptide GP Renegade is here. Quick race, Fountain Park, here we go. You'll notice from the get-go that uh, it's dropping some frames, especially when doing more complex stunts. The water looks fine and just look closely you'll see a millisecond delay between my motions and what's happening on the screen and also uh, when the other boats are running through waves you'll see that this is clearly no high-end phone it can run the game and i'm sure that with a few tweaks from the settings 
it can actually work better but it's more of a casual gaming experience this one don't expect to play PUBG on it that will not happen okay so uh, we also did a bunch of benchmarks let's see those you know the usual benchmarks I'm talking about Antutu, Nenamark and the other ones okay so this is actually Geekbench 4 in uh, Geekbench 4 in the multi-core test we managed to beat the Motorola Moto M and also the Xiaomi Redmi 4 but score below the Huawei Mate 10 Lite and the Xiaomi Redmi Note 4X now we also did some other tests let's see them for example in Antutu 6 we beat the Nokia 6 and the Allview X4 Soul uh, Lite and also score below the Galaxy A6 2018 and the Motorola Moto G5. There is also Antutu 7 here somewhere with its own scores. I'm going to find it at some point. Here we go. This is it. In Antutu 7 we beat the Nokia 6, Nokia 5 but score below the Samsung Galaxy A6 2018. So overall these benchmarks tend to place this phone about on the same level as the Nokia 6, Nokia 5 and the Samsung Galaxy A6 2018. Sometimes it beats them, sometimes they beat it. So overall it fits uh, in that area. Now when it comes to the temperature, we also did a bunch of tests to see if there's any overheating. We got up to 37.6 degrees Celsius in the game you saw before, which is Riptide. And uh, when using GFX Bench, we got up to 36 degrees Celsius. So there's no overheating here, that's the good news. When it comes to the battery, it's a 3000 mAh unit. It's rather small for a 5.99 incher and the results of our test also show us it's not actually good when it comes to the playback time. So when it comes to video playback, 7 hours and 41 minutes, clearly not enough for a full season of a TV show. It may beat the Huawei P9 and the Allview X4 Soul Infinity L, but it scores below the Huawei P20 Lite and the Xperia XA, which themselves were certainly no big hits or big hitters. When it comes to the continuous usage, PC Mark shows us 5 hours 22 minutes, once again underwhelming, placed on the 172nd spot, not very impressive. It beats LG G4, the Sony Xperia Z5 Premium, but scores below the LG G5 and the ZTE Nubia Z11 Mini. Okay, that's about it for the battery life. Well, now let's talk about the charging. Also on the long side, 2 hours 45 minutes, quite slow. And after 30 minutes of charging, you're at a mere 22%. After one hour of charging, you're at 42%, clearly not enough. Settings for the battery are quite generous. You got power saving mode, ultra power saving mode, adjustment of the resolution, and all sorts of battery optimization and keeping Wi-Fi on in sleep mode. Overall, just an okay battery, no records here, some compromises and the charging is frankly speaking too long. On the acoustics front, we got a singular speaker placed here at the bottom near the micro USB port. And let's see what else. Well, uh, it's time to go to the experience. As usual, Huawei provides its own music app, Sans Equalizer. They do have something called Histon, Histon Huawei settings. So uh, you can fill it more with the headphones. And the acoustic experience goes like this. Okay, conclusion, pretty solid bass, reasonable volume, it may cover a conversation in a small room, okay voice and uh, the settings may include that high stand thing I mentioned. Go here, uh, it's actually nothing here, but when you're playing the tune, you may see this option here, which is Huawei Histon, sound effects, headsets, headset type, equalizer, 3D audio, near, front or wide, and you can actually feel the spatiality of the sound in headphones. Okay, so we're done with that, with the 3D sound and all. It's time to see how the decibels look like. We have a special instrument which measures the decibels and we achieved 86.5 decibels with our typical acoustic sample at the front and back. It's better than the Blue Boo S1, the Huawei P10 Plus and HTC 10, but it's inferior to the Asus Zenfone 3 and the Nokia 3. The other test involved us playing a game, Riptide, 102.2 excuse me, 101.2 decibels, solid, top 10 actually, beats HTC U12+, Galaxy Note 8, 
scores below the Nokia 6.1 and the Motorola Moto E4. There's also FM radio here in case you were wondering. And all that were done, done, done with the acoustics. Let's talk about the camera. If you go to the back side, you're greeted by two sensors and an LED flash. This is a combo of 13 megapixels and two megapixels that can take bokeh shots. And at the front, an eight megapixel shooter with its own LED flash hidden smartly in that area. One interesting thing, usually on a budget phone, there aren't any big expectations from uh, selfies and whatnot. Now, if you go here and you're taking a selfie, you can select soft flash, you can see the flash here, and you can actually change its level of brightness. I haven't seen this option very often on other phones, so that's nice to see finally a sort of innovation. Now, uh, I'm going to take you through the gallery. As usual, we've taken a bunch of shots. By bunch, I mean almost 200. As usual, we've abused it. And the good news is that the pictures are actually not bad. For a $180 phone, we got some pretty nifty flower close-ups. I know that bokeh takes a while to get used to and it's not exactly the bokeh you see on the Huawei P20 or the P20 Pro, but it's there and it works. Um, there weren't any blurred shots, any missed shots, any mishaps, any weird focuses or weird colors and I'm actually quite impressed by the camera, believe it or not, even at this price, I find things to be okay. It was a very hot day, 31, 32 degrees Celsius outside and in spite of that, we do not have any burnt shots, you know what I mean by burnt. Powerful sun, can overexpose things, not the case here. The details are rather modest, but the focus, clarity and colors are actually spot on. And I even go as far as to say that the hues of green are better than on the Huawei P20 Pro. When you have the strong sun behind you, the selfies may look weird, but as we progressed through the gallery, we reached an area with a more decent background without a powerful sun and selfies started becoming more okay in both face texture, eye texture, hair texture, and even the background has a pretty okay clarity. Now, uh, if you apply the beautifying effects, you may find your face to be rather weird. I'm talking about the eyes, the skin, a bit too smooth. I prefer it without the beautifications. A few more shots here and there, sometimes with a bit messed up dynamic range, but nothing very serious. That's the main thing to remember here. So we're fighting in the same range as maybe the uh, I would say LG Q6 or even better than it. I find this to be better than the Huawei Mate 10 Lite, believe it or not, and also fighting on par with maybe a Nokia 5 or Nokia 6 from last year. I can also put this phone on par slightly with the Huawei P10 Lite and the P9 Lite 2017. And uh, the panorama was okay at 9664 over 2304 pixels. It clearly beats the second tier phones from China, Bluebu, Ligu, Nubia, and uh, something like the Nokia 3, for example. Actually, not bad. I'm actually uh, surprised it went above my expectations. Now, during the night, things get a bit purple and not very bright. There's some blue here, some white when you turn on the flash, some weird colors. Uh, I would have to say that the street light halos were so-so, not the clearest, but also not the most expanded ones. Uh, colors are okay, clarity is reasonable. There aren't many moved shots, if that's what you're wondering, in case you're rushing a lot. And if you're patient enough to properly stabilize the camera and keep it fixed for a while, maybe take a breath in, you'll achieve some decent shots and it will be hard to tell if you took them with the Huawei P9 Lite or with the Huawei Y7 Prime 2018. It can fight on par with maybe the Motorola Moto E4 series, the Xperia L1, LG Q6, but not more than that. On the video front, uh, let's see what the videos are here. So I guess I'm going to start with this one. Of course, you're working in Full HD. Things are shaky, but the colors are okay. I'm actually impressed by the colors. There is a sudden exposure change at some point. The zoom is obviously poor. The microphone was okay. Some burn and overexposure happens here and there and it was some grain, but for the price, and the fact that the colors are well calibrated is a big enough plus for me. Stabilization is not that good. The microphone also becomes unimpressive when the wind is blowing. Some weird dynamic range here on account of the strong sun, but overall, not that bad. We're moving here. We're filming and moving. Some workers were causing a lot of ruckus. In spite of the fact that electronic stabilization isn't great, at least there's no refocusing. 
that's a good thing. Details are rather poor in the distance, you will not see the leaves of the trees from the distance. Now, uh, one thing that I liked is the selfie video capture, which is actually not that bad. I know that the, strong, the sun is strong behind me, but actually not bad. Microphone also not bad and pretty nifty colors. So I would put this on par with the Huawei Mate 10 Lite, maybe even Sapir a bit because that one didn't film in an excellent fashion and closer to the LG Q6 maybe or a Nokia 5 from last year. Now during the night time things are pretty poor, unimpressive as you probably expect, things are very dark, the zoom becomes poor, microphone remains okay, street light halos are a bit overblown, there's no flicker at least, there's no weird purple hue but there's a bit of orange and red summary focus here and there it fits within the lower end area maybe something like the moto e series moto g series from last year or maybe a bit above overall some pleasant surprises for the camera perhaps the best point about this phone so far when it comes to the web browser we are dealing with chrome and let's load up gsm1.com which happens in a pretty reasonably fast manner and uh, we did some benchmarks which were rather poor for the browser. We got Swift for input with swipe. I'm talking about Sun Spider and Velamo for the browser. And I'm going to do some cleaning here. Okay, now that we're done with this, I guess it's time for the connectivity. Now on the connectivity front, we have here a three card slot. So two for the SIMs, one for the micro SD. There's 4G LT, GPS, AGPS, GLONASS, micro USB, audio jack, Wi-Fi BGN. There's Bluetooth 4.0, NFC, Wi-Fi direct. So we got everything set up and uh, also FM radio plus speed dial, pocket mode. The calls have a mid-level volume, expected a bit more, but the clarity was uh, decent. Now, uh, when it comes to the speed test, we also did that. And let's see how it panned out. Okay, so here we are. These are the speed test results in Wi-Fi up to 50 mega per second in downloads, 50.7 actually, 24.4 mega per second uploads, and in 4G, 89.3 and 44.7 mega per second. I've seen better, to be honest, the 4G is okay, but the Wi-Fi is actually a bit underwhelming. On the software front, we got good news. So this cute little shiny phone here runs on Android Oreo. It's Android 8.0 Oreo with Emotion UI 8.0 on top. We got your Google feed here to the left side, displaying some news, some weather, some useful info. We got here all the apps on the screen, or you can put them in a separate app drawer. We got a carousel for the multitasking. And of course, you can also go with other options like split screen. So let's check out split screen. On one side of the screen, you're going to have your email. And on the other, you may have your Chrome, you're browsing around, you're checking your email at the same time. These are the things you can do in split screen multitasking. We go even further to see what's happening here. What else? Um, now, if you're in the lock screen and you swipe up, you get a bunch of useful shortcuts. Uh, let's see what else. Keep the home screen pressed. You got your wallpaper, widgets, transitions and settings useful settings, layout, auto line, badges, and etc. While the drop down section reveals notifications and of course, quick settings, some of them quite useful. In the settings department, you'll find again useful stuff, your Huawei ID, connectivity, battery, display, storage, security and privacy here. Uh, we got your accounts, smart assistance, which triggers one hand usage, motion control, uh, flip three finger screenshot and more and I want to talk about the security a little bit now uh, I have to say that the uh, fingerprint scanner can be used to take a picture answer a call browse pictures by swiping on it it takes a 14 step setup and has a reasonably fast unlock but I'm more focused on the face unlock which at this price tag you actually do not see very often and do not see in a very efficient manner nowadays so this is the face unlock I'm going to show you the setup and also how it actually works. It scan my face. It can do a direct unlock or slide to unlock and it's going to be so fast you will not even see it. So here we go. It scan my face. So right now it cannot. I'm not facing it. But when I am, it recognizes me instantly. For a 180 bucks phone, that's kind of nice to see. On the pre-installed apps list, there's a lot of stuff. They have bloatware, they got Facebook, Instagram, Booking, eBay, Netflix. They've got a bunch of games 
from Gameloft and more, a bunch of tools which are quite useful. We've got weather calculator, sound recorder, FM radio, torch, mirror, compass, you name it, a total of 53 apps, quite a few of them. The most useful, the most useful being phone manager for sure. You can do cleanup, drop zone, virus scan and more. There's also a notes taking app and a game suite and that's about it. Time for the verdict. This is the Huawei Y7 Prime 2018. Looks like a candy, stings like a bee, well not quite. On the pro side, pictures are quite solid, especially the close-ups and the videos are, I would say, okay. Uh, the looks are certainly favorable for the phone. The fact that I did not encounter any lag is a plus, except for games. Solid acoustics, uh, nice colors in the pictures and videos and for the screen. A pretty okay selfie taking machine, that are the devices. And uh, the backside is pretty cute. There is no overheating. And now as far as the cons are concerned, those are the pros. Now on the cons, I will mention the uh, low brightness of the screen, the poor viewing angles vertically, uh, the games will skip some frames, so not a good gaming device. The battery is a bit of a letdown. Uh, bokeh capture was subpar, there are lots of pre-installed apps and low light capture is certainly not something we can enjoy here. Okay, now uh, this phone looks like a candy, looks like a piece of candy, it's quite affordable. It will be excellent for selfie buffs, it has those uh, uh, tweakable front flash settings, take some nice selfies, has a pretty nice face unlock, doesn't have lag as far as I've seen and plays some pretty decent music. So it's a media phone first and foremost, it's a music phone and a selfie phone for teenagers who will probably enjoy this sort of candy-like look. This is from gsnroom.com, this is a media phone, this is not a gaming phone, you're going to use it for Facebook, Instagram, some selfies and some music. Bye bye.